Blender 2.83 releases today, so let's go over all of the major updates. The grease pencil was refactored, meaning it was basically rewritten to be more organized and less hacky, allowing for much better performance and it should be easier to add new improvements. One new improvement is that lights can now affect grease pencil objects. So shift A, add a light, point light, and I'll just go and make that a little stronger. And then make sure you're in rendered view. And then as you can hopefully see, it's affecting the grease pencil object. Now grease pencil objects don't cast shadows yet. There are now new overlays relating to the grease pencil. There's also a new vertex paint mode and a more basic version in the draw tool tint tool, allowing you control over coloring. And there's quite a few other improvements. I suggest looking at the release notes to learn more. Link in the description. There's a new volume object that allows you to import open VDB files created in effects programs such as Houdini, Embergen, or Blender's Fluid Simulation Cache. You can use empty or import open VDB. You can select one or if you have a bunch of them in a animation, you can just hit A to select them all. And then you should be able to see it. Physics have been improved. Hair collision is now more reliable, and cloth and fluid simulation have gotten some performance improvements. In modeling, the remesh modifier now has a voxel mode that works like the voxel remesh operator. So I can go ahead and move this. It doesn't work that well with Suzanne, since it's not solid, but as you can see, it'll combine it and make it in voxels. The solidify modifier now can assign the shell and rim to specific vertex groups. Many modifiers have a new option to invert the vertex group influence. The multi resolution modifier has been improved to fix artifacts it used to have, but sculpting on a lower level is not available in 2.83. However, you can try it out in the Blender 2.90 Alpha. On curves, if you extrude anywhere but an end, it used to work basically like a duplicate tool, like this. But now it extrudes. On to the sculpt improvements. Remember to reset all of your brushes to ensure that their settings are correct. There's a new brush hardness option, which basically determines how far away from the center of the brush the falloff starts. There's a new clay thumb brush that simulates using your fingers to sculpt with clay. The layer brush has been massively improved. Also in persistent mode, control now works more like in any race. It sets it back to a height change of zero. Before you would need to manually change the height to zero and back, making it more convenient now. If you want to go down in persistent mode, you can just change it to subtract mode manually. It even works after using another brush, so if I were to go, say, snake hook, I can go back to the layer, and I can just hold control, and I can just reset it like a history brush in Photoshop. This is really good for kind of hard surface type stuff. Note that the persistent base will be removed if you change it out of sculpt mode. It currently has a bug that it will often not set the persistent base the first time you press the button. For my testing, it pretty much always goes the second time. Also, if you undo the first thing that you did after setting it, it'll go to undo persistent base, which is annoying. There's a new cloth brush, which simulates cloth wherever you brush. I haven't really played with it enough to go through all of its settings. There's other videos that will explain that better to you. The pose brush now has an option to disable the anchor point. Clay strips now has a brush roundness property or tip roundness which basically if it's all the way up it makes it more like a sphere and if it's more down it makes it more square the smooth brush got a new option called surface smooth which basically smooths the surfaces without changing the volume which means it keeps the basic shape more while also smoothing the surfaces there's also a surface smooth mesh filter 
as well as a sharpened mesh filter which pinches edges and smooths surfaces. Face sets are basically a bunch of saved masks that can be used for masking out of visibility or your brush's effect. The draw face sets brush adds a new face set. If you hold control, it'll instead expand it. And if you hold shift, it'll relax or smooth the face sets. H will toggle hiding on it. So if you hit H on one, it will hide everything else. Alt H will show everything. Shift H will hide the face set you're hovering over. Hiding parts can also increase sculpting performance and get things out of the way. There's now face set auto masking and face set boundary auto masking. So if I'm on a brush, I can choose face set auto masking and it will now only increase in the one that I'm starting. There's now face set auto masking and face set boundary auto masking. So if I'm on a brush, I can choose face set auto masking and it will now only increase in the one that I'm starting. Or if I use boundary, it will only crease on the boundaries of the face sets. That was the basics, but there's a few more options. The overlay view, which you need to have enabled to see it. Shift W is another way to create face sets. It basically expands. And if you hold control when you do it, it will basically flood fill. There's an option in the remesh modifier to preserve face sets. Face sets menu at the top that has a bunch of settings, including initial face sets from things like loose parts, materials, normals, UV seams, edge creases, and more. There's a face sets pie menu with W. Mesh filter has a use face sets option so that it will only work in the specific face set that you started in. There's a relax face sets filter. The pose brush can use the boundaries of the face sets to determine where to rotate from, giving you more control. Other new sculpting features include auto masking can be enabled globally on all brushes from the options. There's now a delay viewport updates option, which increases navigation performance by not updating it as often as it used to during navigation. And there's a voxel size tool with shift R that sets the size of the voxel remesh operator. Cycles now has adaptive sampling, which speeds up renders by automatically reducing samples in areas that don't need as much. If you got an RTX card, there's the Optics viewport denoising for cycles. EV got a bunch of new render passes that can be used for compositing. Blender got virtual reality support for scene inspection, meaning you can look around your scene, but not edit anything yet. So if you go to preferences, add-ons, and search for VR, you'll find it. Go to the VR tab and hit start VR session. It won't work because I don't have a VR headset. It uses a new OpenXR platform. So Oculus and Windows Mixed Reality support is only in development preview, but it should work pretty well. It doesn't work on the HTC Vive yet, but HTC plans on adding support. Undo has gotten its first round of optimizations, giving massive speed improvements to object and pose mode undo. Reflection probes are stored in a different format now, so you'll need to rebake any light caches. Herring EV now supports transparency with alpha hash and clip modes, as well as shadows. LookDev now has a blur option in the environment background, so I can adjust how blurry it is. The Collections Manager add-on now has a bunch of updates. Blender 2.83 is considered LTS, or long-term support. It'll have support for important bug fixes for two years. The version numbering scheme has changed, so the next version will be called 2.9D in the summer and we should have Blender 3 the summer after that. It makes sense as the new versions sound like much smaller releases than they really are. In the Blender 2 series, there has been many times where it would have made sense to have upgraded to Blender 3, such as when it was open sourced, the multiple major UI redesigns, and adding the Cycles renderer. But I'm not sure how I really feel about it. The Blender 2 series started in 2000. It's 20 years old now, likely older than many of the viewers of this video. I feel like it would be kind of cool if it had made it to 3.0 without skipping any versions. There's a bunch of other smaller updates in the release notes, so I'd recommend checking it out in case there's anything you'd find useful. Link in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think of the new version number scheme and the new features. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this. Thank you.